Okay, you guys, this is going to be a longer video, so rad with me. According to the Charlotte Observer, the police report had actually been published. And let's get into the details because there's a ton of inconsistencies with the police report and the medical examiner's examination of Shanquilla's body. Launched a femicide investigation. An expert on femicide in the Cabo region of Mexico says when a woman is killed in Mexico, authorities are often required to open the investigation as a femicide. From there, they look into whether she was killed for reasons due to her gender or if there were specific elements involved, like leaving the body exposed or domestic violence. Essentially, gender causes for violence have to be ruled out before you classify it as a homicide. That expert says attention on this case could help get it closed. That's one thing Robinson's parents have been pushing for. It's just a hurting feeling, man. My heart, I got a hole in my heart. I mean, I can't even be a granddaddy. Can't even walk her down the aisle. That it is an American, though means that there will be additional pressure on the Mexican government and the state government to resolve the case. And I think that will likely lead to a resolution. And he's absolutely correct. Now let's get into that police report because there are some stark contradictions in that. And just let's get into it. So again, this is from the Charlotte Observer. And it starts off by saying the information from the police report says that Shanquilla was alive when the medical help first arrived to her vacation rental where she was staying with a group of friends in Mexico. Now that report differs from details previously reported from the 25 year old Robinson's death certificate stating that she had died within 15 minutes of her injuries. Now we talked about that before extensively in our live stream and it states that she died within 15 minutes of her injuries but that was incorrect. We actually stated in our live stream that she died within 15 minutes according to the medical examiner who had arrived which means that she could have sustained her injuries from the morning time when that fight ensued until the moment the medical examiner arrived and examined her condition. But let's get back into this article. So the article goes on to say, instead, a police report excerpt shows a doctor from the local hospital was with Robinson and others in the home for close to three hours before she was pronounced dead. The Charlotte Observer obtained excerpts from that police report earlier this week and had not yet made it public. Well, now they have. The information was provided to the Observer by Gerardo, I believe his last name is pronounced Zugina, I hope I'm saying that right, an investigative reporter who is currently in Cabo San Lucas. It also states here that notably, the police information reported by and provided by the Metropolitan Police does not mention previous signs of Robinson's physical injuries, which the family stated had extended across her body prior to the funeral. Now, remember, the medical examiner stated that from her extensive injuries to her neck and spine is what caused her death. But that police report that the Charlotte Observer got stated that she died from a cardiac arrest. Remember, before the medical examiner got a video of that fight, her autopsy report stated that she had died of alcohol poisoning. It's the same statement that the family was given from the friends when they arrived back home. Honey, the Charlotte Observer is own it because, again, their investigator who went down to Mexico told them that they were not able to get an official report from the police, but they know a guy who knows a guy, and that's how they got this internal report. Now, let's get into that official police report. So it says here, the information of the police report shows that at 2.13 p.m. on October 29th, medical help was summoned to the Villa Linda 32, and that's the name of the property. Around an hour, Dr. Caroline Gutierrez of the American Medical Center, a local hospital, arrived to treat Robinson. According to report excerpts, house calls to the villa's rental for routine non-emergency medical services are quite common in touristy hubs of Mexico. The Observer confirmed the American Medical Center on Monday that Gutierrez is employed there and the hospital did not respond to the request for the medical or autopsy reports. Which is totally understandable because they're trying to do what they got to do because of the applied and added pressure from the United States State Department. Now back to that police report where that nosy researcher went down there and it stated that it was unclear in the police excerpts who called the medical help, but the reporting person is listed as Winter Donovan. And that means really nothing, you guys. So I want you to make that abundantly clear. It could have been just the first person the police talked to, and they just put her name down as the person who called. So don't try not to think too far into who was the one who initially called. Donovan, like the rest of them, could not be reached for comment. And she also disconnected her phone number. Below, it says the police report excerpts in 
English and in Spanish, according to the Charlotte Observer staff, translated the documents for Dr. Gutierrez. It says that when got Dr. Gutierrez arrived, the, the friends told her that she was drunk from alcohol poisoning. The medical call was for Robinson and she began to give her an IV. Now, according to the police report, Dr. Gutierrez said that she found the female and she had stable vitals, but she was dehydrated and unable to communicate verbally and appeared to be inebriated. Now, remember again that um, Shanquilla had a, a, I think it was called a bilateral laxation to the back of her neck, which would have caused her not to be able to speak. The doctor reported that she believed Robinson needed to be transported to the hospital, but her friends insisted that she be treated at the villa. Dr. Gutierrez attempted an IV, but was unsuccessful. Now remember that IV is important because that is how she's going to get hydrated. And according to that police report, we don't really know what was in that IV. We just know that she was dehydrated and she needed now, the information from the police says that the doctor was there for close to an hour when Robinson began to have a seizure. I'm not a medical examiner or a doctor or anybody in the healthcare field, but I feel like it has something to do with that broken neck and the fact that she was dehydrated and she couldn't get an IV line into her. The convulsions from the seizure lasted less than a minute, according to the report. At that point, the patient's friend named Winter Donovan called 911 to request an ambulance. According to the observers, Spanish to English translation, that was roughly around 4.30 p.m. Don't forget, Cabo is in Mexican Pacific Standard Time, but currently they are in Mountain Standard Time because of daylight savings time. In the meantime, the patients presented with difficulty breathing with a lower pulse, and they began to give her CPR, like Nazir said. The doctor, along with the friends, began to administer CPR at 4.49 p.m. when Gutierrez detected Robinson had stopped having a pulse. The police arrived to talk with the doctor who treated Robinson roughly around 5.25 p.m. It's not clear if the information in the police report exactly what time the ambulance arrived from that 911 call. The report does indicate that paramedics administered a total of 14 rounds of CPR, five doses of adrenaline, and six discharges from a defibrillator without success. Able to revive Robinson, Gutierrez declared her dead at 5.57 p.m., and that's according to the police report. The report listed her as a deceased person with cardiopulmonary arrest or a heart attack or her heart stopped. I'm not entirely sure. And that is for the reason for the police's call. Now, this is where the FBI kicks in, because first, they were just simply working with the State Department to get statements and kind of get a timeline together for the State Department to send to the Mexican State Department to determine if they are going to investigate the case. And because of these conflicting reports, now the FBI is going to start investigating this case. And remember, people were stating early on that the FBI was investigating, and the FBI made that abundantly clear they were not. And now they are. There's too many conflicting reports. We haven't heard from the Kabul Police Department. We haven't heard from the medical examiner. The medical examiner's report is not matching up with the police report. So now the feds have to get involved because we got to figure out what happened. Although it says that she died of a cardiac arrest, we know that when the medical examiner examined her body, he saw those that bilateral or luxation in her neck. I don't know what the term is, but the luxation in her neck as well as in her spine. And we know that she didn't die from alcohol uh, poisoning or a heart attack. So the only conflicting report would be the time of death. That's probably the only conflicting report. And her death certificate is stated that she had died at 3 p.m. or 3.15 p.m. roughly. But here it's saying that she died at 5.57 p.m. So which one is it? She arrived at the hospital what day did the medical examiner actually see her? 